Hi, I'm Femi OK. Today on the stream, the chef patron of Osteria Francescana in Moderna, Italy, the founder of Food for Soul, a lover of contemporary art and music, a goodwill ambassador for the United Nations Environment Programme. Ciao, Massimo Bottura, come stai? Welcome to the stream. So good to see you. Did I leave anything off that list of important credits that you have right now? Uh, what have I missed? Uh, probably. Casa Maria Luisa, probably oh. Casa Maria Luisa, the new country place uh, that we built, uh, you know, in the past uh, couple of years, uh, in which we host the people, we closed the circle of hospitality. Mm. And uh, we, it took five years to clean all the fields from Kimik. Now we pro can produce all our fresh herbs, uh, vegetable, fruit, and uh, wheat, buckwheat, farro, barley for, for our restaurants. So Massimo, I am not going to keep you all to myself. We also have people around the world watching on YouTube right now. We have a comment section. It is live. It is open. It is ready for you. In the comment section, you can put your comments, your questions for Massimo Bottura, and he will answer them. So get them in as soon as you can. Massimo, I'm going to start a few years ago. Have a look on my laptop, this, this youngster here. You, <laughs> Massimo is actually doing social oh media God. while he is oh on God. TV. All right. So are you, I think you're seven there. Um, uh, um, uh, yeah. Had, yes. you, had you cooked anything yet? Had your grandma taught you probably, anything? Probably even six. Oh, six. Because I, I was uh, born uh, late in the year, so yeah. uh, probably I was still six. So six-year-old Massimo, what was your yeah. relationship was to food? Maker. What was your relationship to food? Did you already have skills? as a little six-year-old? No, I grew up under the table. Uh, you know, I was the younger uh, of uh, five brothers and sisters, and uh, I was uh, spending time in the kitchen with my mom and my grandmother with my hand. And, uh, you know, from under the table, I was looking at the world. Uh, uh, I was looking, you know, and uh, in a, from a different perspective. And in the meantime, I was stealing the tortellini from, uh, from, uh, <laughs> from my grandmother prep, you know. There's something, that was, uh, there's something that you have done over the years, which, which I find fascinating, which is that you've, you've led this movement from chefs being in the kitchen and people admiring their skills, their culinary skills, to being out in the world, talking to the world about important issues. The connection is obvious once you start hearing and seeing it. Where did that come from in your life? Who gave you that voice? Uh, I think uh, the reputation of the chef, they start growing uh, in the 90s. Uh, and um, all these uh, gastronomic congress help us to connect one to another, uh, to connect to each other. and. Uh, we became friends. That's a, a movement, you know. It's be, it became a movement, a global movement. Uh, Spanish, French, uh, uh, Chinese, Japanese, Americans, all together in, uh, in this uh, Congress in which we were sharing technique, ideas, and everything. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, locally, we start, uh, uh, we start becoming... Uh, um, more, you know, uh, considerate in a, in, a, in, a, in a different way. And uh, to me, uh, when I, I was preparing a video, I remember there was one moment that I was preparing a video called Comeback, it was all about memory, it was all about um, fishing and the area, the beautiful park of the Delta of the Po. I found, I met uh, a forest guard that was really mad on us uh, where we were filming about uh, the eel swimming up the Po River. And, uh, you know, so I, I, I was keep filming and I kept the denounce of this uh, forest guard in the short movie that I was presenting uh, in the con Culinary Congress. Uh, the Regione Emilia Romagna, our president, uh, decide uh, to look uh, at the movie and uh, start talking and discussing with me. And uh, we convinced uh, the Regione 
to invest 14.5 million uh, to clean the old park of Delta of the Po River, where the eels comes from, where the, um, the, 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 the economy of, the, of uh, Emilia Romagna is uh, the focus of the economy of Emilia Romagna, the Delta of the Po, of the big river. And at that point, uh, I understood that, uh, you know, I was more than the sum of my recipes. Mm -hmm. I could be an agent of change. And, um, you know, since I was a kid uh, in our region, you understand that uh, stay together, uh, it's more than, uh, uh, you get stronger than uh, uh, talk just about yourself or, or play with yourself. And, uh, uh, and at that point, uh, uh, there was a 2012 uh, uh, focus when uh, a big earthquake hit the um, Modena. Mm -hmm. And uh, the consortium of Parmigiano Reggiano came to me uh, and he said, Massimo, we have a big problem. We, we have uh, 360,000 wheels of Parmigiano that are damaged. You have to help us. So I came out with this recipe called riso cacio e pepe, in which uh, I was using a lot, a lot of Parmigiano Reggiano with new technique. Um, and uh, I created this uh, incredible recipe that I was uh, sharing with all my connection in the world. Yeah. And uh, we start selling Parmigiano Reggiano that was damaged. Uh, put sous vide in uh, kilos or double kilos. People from all over the world, like that, you know, like magic, yeah. uh, start buying Parmigiano Reggiano. Uh -huh. And uh, in four months, we sold 360,000 wheels of Parmigiano oh, Reggiano. Oh, my goodness. Oh. And we save uh, the old compartment just with the recipe. Yeah, yeah. And a recipe as a social gesture. So from there, after that, the Universal Exposition, in which the theme was Feed the Planet, mm. and the rest is history. Massimo, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring you up to the present. I promise you that we would have questions for you. And this one comes from the chef manager at Imperfecto Restaurants. Here she is. Immediately after she's finished, I would love your reaction and your response. Back in 2017, I trained at Osteria Franciscana. My experience was extraordinary and undeniably world-class. What made my experience stand out was the fact that it felt like one big family under one roof. I was also fortunate enough to have a look at Chef Massimo's non-profit project, Food for Soul, which nourishes the hungry and fights food wastage. Thank you, Chef Massimo, for teaching me the most important lesson of my life. That is of ensuring that whatever I do should bring me the utmost happiness. And Chef, please, can I ask you one question? How can we make a concept like Food for Soul successful in India? Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> you know, feels very good to hear that, you know. Uh, it's um, how can you make uh, food for soul? Uh, I think uh, uh, I think first of all, uh, you you really look, have to look at yourself and uh, understand if you really want to do it because it's not easy. Eh? It's not easy because uh, you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in the others. You uh, you really want to uh, have to want to share uh, the, the, your idea and this uh, incredible, uh, you know, strength you have to have to make this uh, happen. Then uh, you have to find uh, a partner that is going to take care of the everyday life because uh, that's very important. Our project is a cultural project, is not a charity project. The real heroes of Food for Soul are the volunteers. They are like working every day in our refectorio all over the world. Uh, after that, 
you have to connect with the market, supermarket, and uh, organize, uh, um, you know, a pickup of surplus food. Because it's not about food waste, it's about surplus food. Uh, you know that uh, we produce food for 12 billion people uh, every year. Uh, there are 860 million people, they don't have access to food, they don't have anything to eat. Um, uh, we are 7 billion on Earth, and we waste 1.3 billion tons of food every year, uh, and uh, we are becoming, that is 33% of the production, and we are becoming the first cause of climate change. Huh. So, please, the more we are, the better it is. We are the revolution, as Joseph Boyce was saying. Mm. As you, um, you want to change uh, the whole uh, uh, perspective of uh, India, but if you can change uh, your own neighborhood, this is a really great victory. I've learned that through every single repertorio. When, uh, when we did this uh, for the first time, uh, and uh, we create this project on a universal exposition. I said, it, you know, let's try, let's see what's going on. I involve all my friend, uh, uh, artist, artisan, uh, uh, designer to create a beautiful place. Th that was, uh, this is Milan. The one before was London. And uh, this one is, uh, and, uh, and, and at that point, I and that's what I did. I, I just want to point out, because you, you know how beautiful these spaces are, but the beauty, the environment is just as important as the food, yes. right? Talk to us about yes. that a little bit. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. The beauty of the design, the beauty of the art, the quality of the idea, the, beautiful, the beauty of the plate, the beauty of creativity really can make the difference in life of people. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm saying it's not a charity project, but it's a, a, a cultural project. Because we are giving, we are fighting food waste yep. through our creativity, our time, but also we are fighting social isolation. And Massive. you know, for people in need, yes. uh, beauty can really give uh, the second chance in life for people uh, that really, they, they did. They, 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 they miss. You know, right. they are in. They, they're in trouble. They're. They need. They need. Mas, they Masa, need the sacrifices in I, life. I have. A, I have more questions for you. So I'm going to see if I can fit them in as well. Uh, oh my God. This is. Yeah. yeah there's more. <laughs> this is Angad. Uh, listen to Angad and then please respond to him directly. He has a question for you. My question for Chef Massimo is: What are your thoughts on the amount of food waste that is produced in culinary schools? And what do you propose is the most meaningful solution to address this issue of the food waste generated in large kitchens like those on college campuses? Oh, that's very good. That's a very good question. I was, uh, I was uh, invited uh, with, not, not invited, but we were organizing a, a big uh, talk uh, with uh, LA Times in Los Angeles. And I did a, a, a speech uh, at the UCLA and I said, guys, we really need to, to do something very special here. This is a perfect place for, for to, to, to stimulate these guys, you know, the new leader for the future. So in the campus can be set, in every campus, in every university, can be set a, a kitchen, a special kitchen in which the uh, students they would be the volunteers. We can, could feed students at lunch and people in need in the evening, connecting with a special supermarket or market. They're gonna deliver the food in excess. It would be so easy to do it and it would change the mind of millions of students. They're gonna be the leader of the future. I have a couple of questions for you, Massimo, on YouTube. So I'm going to go live to our, our YouTube viewers right now. This one is from John Cooper. Within hospitality and restaurant kitchens, what measures and innovations 
are in place to reduce food waste. Is the level of food waste within hospitality comparable with the waste that happens at home, Massimo? Exactly. That's a very, very the, 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 you know, it, it's a great question because uh, uh, we have, uh, we, the, the places where we waste the most is in our home, is not in the restaurant. You know, in, uh, in Osteria Francescana, yeah, I don't know if you know, but uh, we have uh, three Michelin star, like the top of the top of the score, red, but we also have the fourth star that is a green one, is uh, the star of sustainability. And uh, why? Because uh, our uh, restaurant is zero waste. All our restaurants are like acting as my grandmother would act home. So uh, everything that we have, uh, that we waste in our preparation goes uh, to the staff meal. Imagine, in Osteria Francescana, Via Stella, 22, we have 30 guests every lunch, 30 guests every dinner. But we have to feed 60 workers, 60 of our kids, you know, every lunch and every dinner. So it's a, the incredible creative exercise is staff meal. And uh, each one of us, uh, once a week, has to play, has to start, has to work uh, on, uh, uh, to create staff meal and, uh, you know, uh, show uh, how could, uh, you know, how, you, how we fight food waste. You know, the, the crazy thing is now that we have an eggplant in, a, in, a, in our tasting menu, that is like, everyone wants to taste that eggplant. And we have so much eggplant waste and we are eating eggplants since a couple of months and people <laughs> are starting to think, let's change the menu. You know. That's the point. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, but where we waste the most is in our home. That's why I said many times that uh, kitchen quarantine, uh, what we did, uh, me and my daughter and uh, Charlie and Lara mm -hmm. during uh, the first lockdown was the perfect example uh, of food for soul. I, I, I'm going to share with uh, I'm going to show on, on, on your laptop, on my laptop, kitchen, kitchen quarantine, because your family at home is exactly as wild as I would imagine it would be. I'm going to show, just remember, <laughs> do you remember those pictures of Italy during the, the February, March, April, and what was happening there, and the serious lockdown, and this is what it was like in Massimo's home during quarantine. Have a look. I stay close to zero waste by allowing the contents of my refrigerator and pantry to dictate what my next meal is going to be. Most of us, when we were taught to cook, we were told, choose a recipe at random that looks tasty, jot down all of the ingredients, go to the store, buy the ingredients, bring them home, prep the dish, cook the dish, eat some of the dish, put the leftovers in the refrigerator. Now, if you do that a few nights a week, you have not only the leftover dishes, but also a whole bunch of leftover ingredients, the little bits and pieces of this and that that didn't make it into those dishes. Chances are some of that food's going to go to waste. So look at what you have on hand and then figure out what meal you can make with that. The question I have for Chef Massimo Batura is, what can we do on a bigger level in our communities to help reduce food waste? You know, uh, be, you know, it first of all uh, is like step by step. You know, when we we are doing, we are doing, we are, I'm trying to, to, the most important thing is educate. Educate people how to buy. Because uh, you have to buy the right amount of food that you need for a couple of days, for three days. And then you use uh, that food uh, with uh, with uh, and and uh, and uh, and uh, and when uh, the refrigerator uh, is empty, you dedicate another half an hour to shop. This is the most important thing. First of all, second, uh, and so and and so don't shop for one month. Fill your uh, big uh, uh, freezer with the ingredients because you're gonna spend more money. 
you're gonna eat uh, nothing. You're gonna eat, but you don't taste anything because the food uh, is frozen and uh, and is not is not tasty at all. But uh, my suggestion is buy seasonal ingredients, focus on local ingredients, I add some exotic, exotic touch. Uh, for example, I think about Parmigiano Reggiano. Parmigiano Reggiano can, can help uh, a plate of pasta to get perfect, uh, you know, just with uh, his uh, in natural umami, you know, this kind of example, no? And at that point, you know, you're gonna stop waste, you're gonna eat better, and uh, you're gonna save money, and you, you're gonna fight food waste. This is the most simple thing. Uh, in, uh, in larger scale, you know, we, uh, uh, what we did at the Universal Exposition, um, we helped uh, uh, the Italian government, for example, and the French government to write the law on uh, food waste and pass the law about food waste. Uh, I'm doing a, a lot of things, uh, you know, uh, events uh, yeah. or like, uh, like opening like... restorio, yeah. you know, and, uh, and uh, if we can one day open one million refectorio all over the world, you know, we're gonna feed the people in need, we're gonna fight uh, all the waste of this world, and uh, the planet is going to smile to us uh -huh. because the, we are, as I said before, we are the revolution. Not me, not you, but all together. Let me just share this with you because you know this is coming up and, and this is new in the last couple of years. The International Day of Awareness of Food Loss and Waste, the 29th of September. Um, and that's coming up in just a couple of days time. Um, why is this important? It's also part of the Sustainable Development Goals, that development agenda that we have as a whole world. Why is that important to you? Because that brings in your role as a United Nations Environment Programme Goodwill Ambassador. But, but you, have to see, you have to understand that, you know, I grew up like this. I grew up in a family in which uh, wasting food was like, was, was not acceptable. I couldn't leave the table if I brought food in my plate and I didn't want to eat. My grandmother would, what, she wouldn't let me leave the table. Uh -huh. um, but you know, we were, okay, this is uh, a little bit creepy, but take it. <laughs> I'm scared. When, when, uh, every, we, we are living in Modena, but just uh, 10 minutes from here, it's country, you know, and there are farmers and uh, in each family, uh, they were growing pigs. Mm. And uh, the 8th of December, uh, in our uh, farm, we were killing the pigs. Um, but to celebrate life, not to celebrate the death. To celebrate life, why? Because uh, we were, the pigs was part of the family. Most of the time, they had a name. And, uh, you know, the pig was giving his life my grandmother keeps saying to me, was giving his life to, to feed the family. Uh, they're all here. So you have to pay respect mm -hmm. of the animal. And, uh, you know, use every single part, every single bones. And, uh, you know, that's the way you respect things. That's the way you, you, you fight food waste in uh, many different... Uh, uh, aspect and when you grow like that, you know it's extremely important uh, beca because because uh, uh, inside uh, wasting breadcrumbs uh, is uh, is yeah. like wasting Massimo, uh, the opportunity Batura, to eat. I could spend the whole day with you, but we have to wrap up. What would be the last thing that you would want to say? And it's one sentence, one sentence. What is that one sentence to wrap us up with? Uh, that's uh, one sentence. Um, food uh, right now is a call to act. So I'm talking about Thank everybody. You. but I'm Massimo, talking about Batura, for being a guest on the stream. We appreciate you. Grazie. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for your questions. I'll see you next time. Take care.
All right, Massimo, I get to have 